TJ is a great place to pursue passions. You have the opportunity to take coursework you couldn't take anywhere else. Where, I mean, where else could you take artificial intelligence, bio nanotechnology, unique courses because you've chosen to come to TJ. Outside of that, you have eighth period. You have extraordinary opportunities to actually create the direction of what you really enjoy to do. On top of all of that, you have prom asking. You have ways to express your creativity through project work and through extra time to do very unique things and pursue your passions. Even inside of classes, hey, I've taught math at TJ and I love function aerobics. You've got the cubic function, which is the disco dancer, or you've got the step function, which is King Tut. Or one over x squared, that's a volcano. <laughs> how about, how about the reciprocal function, one over x? Ready, watch this, it's the butterfly. Full body motion. All right, you can pursue passions in many ways in all your classes, but the reality is you also have plenty of obstacles along the way. You have many competing interests, worksheets, problem sets, demands from parents. You have many things going on in your lives that actually prevent you or limit your ability to pursue your passion. And you may say, why are all these obstacles in the way? Okay, so one person may say, well, wait a second, you're at a wonderful place like TJ, you need to really just stop and smell the roses. Every time you make progress on your particular passions, you ought to just take it all in, pause, enjoy the moment because you are in a very special place to do amazing things and along the way, you're just gonna have to deal with obstacles. I have a totally different point of view. My point of view is, okay, we all have obstacles, but you know what? If you are dedicated to be efficient and get them done productively, get them out of the way, you really should just stop and eat the sandwich. Stop and eat the sandwich. Because you reward yourself, ultimately, by getting through all the stuff that seems to be getting in the way. So I'll give you some examples in my own personal life. Saturday morning, I will wake up and realize I've got a full inbox. And I may be asking myself, oh my gosh, this is really going to inhibit my ability to pursue my passion of supporting students at our school and teachers at our school to do really amazing things. There's nothing that makes me happier than trying to set up an environment for all of you so you can be very creative and innovative in all of your work. For me, answering email doesn't cut it at all. It's an obstacle. So I think to myself, well, maybe if I find a way to reward myself, I can actually get it done efficiently, which is what I do. So I do my email, and at home, look at that sandwich. You could do this too. You take a bagel, you toast it, you get those morning sour veggie burgers, you know, those chipotle kind, black bean. You take a coffee cup, a mug, you put some egg in there, mix it up with a little milk, put it in the microwave for a minute and 15 seconds and let it rise. And then you put a little piece of cheddar cheese. And then you just take all of it and just smash it together. And that is an amazing reward. That is an amazing reward for being very efficient in the stuff that I normally wouldn't feel excited about doing. All right, let me show you another story. So uh, it's my hometown, Chicago. Raise your hand if you've been to Chicago. Okay, good number of you, about a quarter of you. So uh, Chicago is a wonderful, wonderful city, except for January, February, and March. And uh, getting there, though, can seem like an ordeal. You know, you have to deal with all the packing in advance and checking in, waiting in line, taking off your shoes, you know, getting everything all set and ready. Uh, not to mention when you fly into Chicago, it's a windy city. It's actually, it is very windy because of the lake effect. Its name is actually as a result of history its politicians are full of wind. Uh, however, I have to say it's not an enjoyable experience packing, getting ready, and then flying to Chicago. So I feel like I really have to reward myself for making the trip. 
And actually, all of you, if you haven't gone to Chicago, and next time you go, you need to reward yourself with this sandwich right there. That is called an Italian beef sandwich. And what makes that sandwich particularly awesome is they take really thinly sliced shaved beef. It's very different from a Philly cheesesteak now. You put it in a pot, you simmer it with hot spices, or excuse me, uh, you know, Italian spices. And then you take this nice long hoagie roll and you put the beef, you know, you take it out of the pot and you put it in the sandwich. And then you can get it dry or juicy, but you really should get it juicy because they take the whole sandwich and they just completely submerge it in the water and all the juices, right? And then you put some hot peppers or sweet peppers on the top. And to eat the sandwich, there's a proper etiquette to eat this type of sandwich, okay? So I rolled up my sleeves because there's no way you can bite into that sandwich without making a huge mess. So you just take that sandwich and you bite into it and you just let the juices just dribble down your arm. It just melts in your mouth. And then you feel like, you know what? It's worth the hassle to get ready for a plane ride that I know is going to be fairly turbulent and I'm going to have to sit in all of these security lines to get through just so I can go to Chicago. And my passion, of course, is to see my family and friends. Okay? I'll share one more story with you. So another passion of mine has been writing, and in particular doing research. In fact, I love being at a place like TJ because this is a, this is a culture of research. We try to establish a habit of mind in a systematic process in which you are thinking through problems in a very thoughtful, intentional way. So I went to University of Georgia for my dissertation, uh, graduate work, PhD. And while I was working there, uh, I really loved research. I had a great chance to be involved in the interdisciplinary lab and do some pretty thoughtful and uh, creative things with technology. So I have to say, sometimes I ran into obstacles, right? So one of the obstacles that I ran into is a squirrel. And uh, many of you think that a squirrel is this lovely creature and very friendly, and uh, you know they just go on their merry way. <coughs> well, I have to say, they're not as lovely and friendly when they start getting inside your house. So a house actually is just a nice tree in the winter time. So when the uh, squirrel gets inside your attic in your house, and if you, you know, you're trying to get some work done, you hear this pitter-patter, 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 pitter-patter. And you know what? You hear that pitter-patter, 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 pitter-patter all night long, so you can never sleep. So I was like, there's no way I can continue working on my dissertation unless I get rid of these squirrels. How in the world do you remove a squirrel from an attic? It's not like I was going to go chase after them. So what did I do? I actually did some research and learned that Jif Extra Crunchy peanut butter makes a huge difference. And here's how it works, okay? Just in case you're working on your dissertation in your future, which many of you will be, and you just happen to be distracted by squirrels. Here's the technique. Okay, you can have a uh, lawn with 100 different trees. I guarantee you there's an extremely high probability that this, all the squirrels will be going towards the same tree, so they have the same food source. They don't go to the other trees with acorns. They only go to one for all their acorns. So then you go to this tree, you find the acorns, and you start scooping them with Jiffy pe uh, peanut butter. And then you place it, and then they get really excited. They're like, wow, this is a really good acorn. <laughs> <coughs> so then you go inside, uh, or you go to Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever, and then you buy this have a heart, you know, a kind cage that does no harm to a squirrel. And you place a huge lump of Jif Extra Crunchy peanut butter, the big gold mine, all in the center. And sure enough, after a couple of days, it gets used to the cage, it gets used to those great acorns, boom, you start catching them. And when you catch them, I was like, wow, I did it, okay? So what did I do? I decided to take a trip to my favorite sandwich place, Kelly and Tito's in Athens, Georgia, Check out that sandwich, a Cubano. My favorite was chorizo and egg. That is one awesome sandwich to reward myself for catching a squirrel. And the great thing about squirrels is they come in families. So I went home, 
Did the same thing two days later. I caught another squirrel. I went home two days later. I caught another squirrel. I went home two days later. I caught another squirrel. And I kept eating those sandwiches. Got rid of all the squirrels. And guess what? I was able to finish my dissertation. So what's the moral out of all this? There we go. There's two of them. Number one, if you ever need me to help you out and do something for you, I can be paid in sandwiches. <laughs> and number two, if you ever get distracted by the little things in the work that you do that prevent you from your passions, all you need to do is find a way to reward yourself so you can do it efficiently, get it out of the way, and feel great about focusing on your passions. If you do that, you'll be on your way. Thank you very much.